He also mentions that he was rescued uh, as the Black Horse Cavalry was dis dis descending upon him. And it very well may have been the Black Horse Cavalry in this particular case um, because they were in this area. Uh, Black Horse Cavalry uh, was not attacking uh, the uh, fire zoos of the 14th Brooklyn. That was Stewart. He was, he was up there by Henry Hill and the Black Horse Cavalry troop. There's one troop, an independent troop, uh, was down uh, around where uh, Bonham was, I believe, or Cook. Uh, he was rescued by this guy here, who's Edmund Kirby. You ever hear Edmund Kirby? Without the Smith? Edmund Kirby Smith was named for his father. His father was the uh, commanding general of the United States Army at one time, Edmund Kirby. And he was uh, grievously wounded at Chancellorsville and received, uh, at, it was under the care of Fanny Ricketts. He was in command of Company I of the 1st U.S. Artillery, um, which had been Ricketts' battery at uh, Bull Run. Ricketts was very badly wounded. Very unlucky if you're going to be commander of the I of the 1st because his successor was Hazlitt. And you know what happened to Hazlitt at Gettysburg? went over to talk to Weed. <clears throat> Probably shouldn't have done that. Probably should have done his job, not talk to Weed. Uh, but he was saved by him, so that's in, that's in there. So he's worked in Lincoln and Custer in the, the Black Horse Cavalry and Edmund Kirby. And he writes here, this is a page from the article, uh, he writes here that uh, he picked up a sword from a dead Confederate cavalryman, and there's a picture of the sword. And he says, uh, I listened as a young boy will to the talk and said nothing, but when the terror of the famous 4th Virginia Cavalry was spread, I looked at the blade of my saber. He had picked this up. It was a peculiar piece of steel, long, very long, many inches longer than our regulation cavalry swords, and it was very sharp, really sharp to cut with instead of having the dull edge contained in the swords of most of our regiments. On the steel, stamped in close to the hilt, was the legend, 4th Virginia Regiment. It hangs near me while I write this. That's good stuff. <laughs> Is that not good stuff? Does anybody in here like the cavalry? Come on, you can do it. What do you know about the 4th Virginia Cavalry? Company H was the Black Horse. Yeah, when was, it, when was 4th Virginia Cavalry formed? Uh, Wickham was their colonel. Later in 1861, not, not the time of Bull Run. I used to have the date in my head, and I can't remember it. But they, they did become Company H. But at that time, they were not. Yes? There were a couple of companies of the fourth, a couple of companies at Falls Bluff that later became part of the fourth. Of the fourth, right. And, and, and the, the Black Horse Troop became part of the fourth. But at the time of the <coughs> run, the fourth didn't exist. So it couldn't have been engraved that way. Then. It doesn't seem that way. I, I, called, I, I contacted West Point to see if they have this in their in their uh, museum, and they said they, they didn't have any record of it. I always hope maybe uh, Ames will be in the crowd. And uh, if he's not too mad at me at this point, will tell me. <laughs> and again, I, you know, I don't know. It seems a little fishy. He's working all this stuff, doesn't it? So, I don't know. Um, but I, I can conject, right? We're all allowed to conject. And I won't conject so much as I'll let you conject. In 1908, while his brother, in August, on August 15th of 1908, while his brother, Thornton Jenkins Haynes, the well-known writer of sea stories, held back with drawn revolver a gay throng, that's a different kind of gay, a gay <laughs> throng of yachting folk, Captain Peter Conrad Haynes, Jr. of the 48th Coast Artillery stationed at Fort Hancock shot and killed William E. Annis, advertising manager of the Burr Macintosh magazine yesterday afternoon on the float of the Bayside Yacht Club at Bayside, Long Island. He fired eight shots from the magazine pistol at him. Um, Mr. Annis fell back into the water, took a couple strokes. He got hit by uh, at least five of those shots at least three in the ambulance. They took a stroke, and then they pulled him back into the boat, he went to the hospital later and died. Uh, I think he's kind of like Blackbeard, you know, swam around in Queen Anne's Bend with his head chopped off. And so, pretty tough guy. 
This is the headline of the New York Times on the 16th. Um, Peter Haynes was a uh, junior. We'll call him Junior. All right, we're going to call him Junior. We're going to call TJ DJ, and we're going to call the old man the old man. I just imagine you're watching Pawn Stars, and you just don't have a chumbling. Okay, but we got the old man, TJ, and, uh, and, and Junior. He was 36 years old, uh, and actually stationed at Fort Ham, uh, not at Fort Hamilton, but Fort, Fort Hancock, which is in uh, um, um, Sandy Hook, uh, New Jersey. And it's part of the National Park Service today. But that's where the Seacoast batteries were. They had, they had this uh, disappearing battery that rose up and went back down again. Uh, while he was in the Philippines in 1907, he had received letters from TJ uh, telling him about his wife, who he married at the age of 16. She was 16. He was older. Um, he married her at the age of, I think he was 10 years older than her. Uh, and, and of course, in, in these types of stories, when he married her at the age of 16, what did her family think? <laughs> oh, it was against the wishes of her family, right? Anytime he has a story like this, it's always against the wishes of the family. Uh, so TJ uh, wrote letters to uh, uh, Junior in the Philippines. It's an important thing, too, to remember. He's in the Philippines. And telling him of orgies at his home, at the fort, <laughs> involving his wife, Claudia Libby, who he had married when she was 16 against the wishes of her family. She denied it. But Junior kept an eye on things. And he confirmed that she was having an affair with their close friend, William Manis, who was a regular guest with his wife at their house. Annis visited Claudia at Fort Hancock often. Eventually, the old man had embarked from the residence. Tried to get embarked from the post in general. This is the Bayside Yacht Club in the uh, 1930s, I think. It's not there anymore. I was just in, I was just on Long Island, tried to find it. Nobody ever heard of it before. So I couldn't find it. I think there's a bridge above it there or something now. Now, Philippines fired with eight shots from a magazine pistol. What's that? <laughs> what kind of 45? M1911. Not model 1911. That's not model 1911 A1, but model 1911. What year was this? 1908. 1908. Uh, Browning came up with this this pistol earlier in, 19, in the, in the uh, 20th century, I think around 1900, 1901, the U.S. Army didn't want it. And uh, they, um, he actually ended up selling a lot of them in Europe, I believe. But what happened on the Philippines? The Moro Wars. The Moro uh, were tribesmen, right? Yeah. 